What's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna start taking a look at an automation tool called Packer. And if you don't know what Packer is, it's a tool that allows us to create custom images across a multitude of platforms. So if we wanna create a custom AWS AMI or a custom Azure image, or even a custom Vagrant box, we can do that all through Packer. Now, if you've taken a look at the AWS marketplace, I'm sure you may have noticed that there's already over a thousand AMIs. And you might be wondering, well, why would we want to create a custom image? You know, I'm sure one of those would fit our need. And for me to explain why we need to use a tool like Packer and why we would want to create custom images, I need to explain what is immutable infrastructure and what it brings to the table. Because once we have a better understanding of that, we'll really start to see the benefits of using a tool like Packer in our deployment model. Okay guys, so that's enough talking for now. Let's start taking a look at a little bit of theory when it comes to immutable infrastructure. And then after that, we'll start diving into Packer. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the traditional deployment model. So we're gonna start off in the development stage. This is where we're working on our application, writing the code out for that application. And uh, let's say that we're building a web server or a web application, right? Uh, eventually, once we finish writing the code for our application, we're gonna move on to the deployment stage. In the deployment stage, we're going to be deploying a server. And we're going to be deploying that server someplace. It doesn't really matter where. It can be a server on an on-prem data center. It can be an EC2 instance on AWS. It can be a virtual machine on Azure or GCP. It doesn't really matter, but there will be a server running someplace or another. Now this server is going to be installed with some operating system. So you'll have to install some uh, flavor of Linux or Windows, uh, whatever your operating system of choice is. And at that point, this server still is not really production ready, right? We just have a clean install of some operating system, um, but there's still a lot of changes that we need to make before it's uh, ready to be deployed into production. And that's when we move into the configuration stage. So in the configuration stage, this is where we really make sure that our server is ready for production. We're gonna make changes like patching the kernel. We're gonna update and install all the necessary repos. We'll configure a firewall. We'll make sure that, you know, if this is a web application that we allow the HTTP and HTTPS traffic. We're also going to have to perform other tasks to ensure that our server is properly secured so it's not vulnerable to various threats and attacks. And then finally, we gotta get our application code onto the server so that it can actually run our code. Now this model is referred to as mutable infrastructure. And what that means is, you know, mutable means to mutate, which means to change, right? So we deploy our server, and then we have to configure our server. So we are changing it, right? When we patch the kernel, when we update those repos, we are making changes to our server. And that's why this is referred to as mutable infrastructure because you are changing your infrastructure. So down the road, if you need to um, apply a new or add a new package or make a change to the firewall configs, you need to mutate it once again. Now this model works perfectly fine if you have a single server, right? Managing those configs manually it's not a big deal if you've just got one server. It's a little bit of an inconvenience, um, but you know that you just got one server. So anytime you need to make changes, you just have that one server. And you know, once it's been updated, you're good to go. The real problem starts to rise uh, when you've got hundreds of servers. And now you have to maintain all of those changes across a hundred different servers. And what usually ends up happening is that some of these servers suffer from config drift. And that happens because you know some configs get pushed out to some of the servers and other servers don't get those configs pushed out. And eventually over time, you'll see that those configs, those config mismatches tend to grow more and more. And this can ultimately lead to issues with your application down the road. Now we have ways of getting around this. There are tools built for this. I'm sure you guys are already familiar with Ansible. It's a automation tool. It's really a config management tool so that uh, you know, all the configuration changes you need to make that need to get pushed out to all of the servers, Ansible will make sure that all of those changes get pushed out to the server for you and will make sure that they all have matching configs. And this is a perfectly valid solution, a uh, perfectly valid design. This is something a lot of people use uh, right now. So it is a perfectly valid design. However, I do want to offer an uh, alternative, right? So till now, we've kind of just been talking about uh, mutable infrastructure. Uh, so now I want to actually point you guys to immutable infrastructure. So, uh, you know, once again, with a mutable infrastructure, we have the development stage. Then we've got the deployment stage where we deploy the server. And then finally, we've got the config stage where we configure our server. However, what if we swap those last two stages so that we configure the server before we deploy it? So you might be wondering how exactly we configure a server before we deploy it. 
right? Because we need to deploy the server and have access to the operating system before we can actually make big changes to it. And that's where a tool like Packer comes into play. So as I mentioned in the earlier video, right, Packer is a tool that allows us to create and customize images. And so now we can make images uh, that have certain applications already installed. We can ha make images that have um, our code already copied over. We can make images that have uh, certain uh, patches already applied to the box. And, uh, you know, if you've ever worked with AWS, uh, you know, their term for images is AMIs. And they've got an AMI for pretty much everything. So if you want to deploy a SQL server, you can actually just use a SQL AMI, which already has SQL installed for you. It's very convenient. It's a lot quicker and more convenient than, you know, deploying just a traditional Linux server and then installing SQL yourself. And so just like with those custom AMIs, Packer can create our own custom AMIs as well. And so, you know, in the previous example, when we took a look at um, mutable infrastructure, right, uh, the things that we needed to do to make that server ready for production was making sure that we copied our application code to the server, as well as made all those config changes as well. And that included things like patching the kernel and updating the repos. Now with Packer and with an immutable infrastructure, right, we can take those two things and bake them into the image. So now our image has all of our configs and it has all of our application code already installed. So when we go to deploy our image onto a server, that's all we have to do. It is done. We've deployed it to the server. Now the server is already production ready. We don't need to make config changes. We don't need to copy our code um, because all of that is pre-baked into the image. And that's really the benefits of an immutable infrastructure is that, right, we don't need to touch the server once it's been deployed. That's why it's called immutable. We can't mutate it. We can't change it. Now, down the road, if we have to make some changes, right? So let's say we need to add a new dependency or we make some code changes to our application, right? You might wonder, you know, how exactly do we handle that at that point, right? Because in an immutable infrastructure, the main idea behind that is that we don't touch our infrastructure after it's been deployed. So we can't change our server that's been currently deployed. We can't push a new image to that server. It's immutable, right? So instead, what we do in an immutable infrastructure is that we kill that server and then we just deploy a fresh new server with the new image, which has the new changes already baked in. It's really that simple. And I'm sure you guys are thinking, well, won't that cause traffic loss? Well, here's the thing. Technically, yes, but you should be architecting your infrastructure so that you can handle uh, tearing down and spinning up new servers all the time. So if you're you know, working in a cloud environment, most cloud providers have some sort of load balancer service. And you would take all of your web servers and you would shove them behind the load balancer and the load balancer would load balance traffic to all of these servers. And usually the load balancer has some kind of service to um, make sure and check the health of all of the individual servers that it's servicing traffic to. So if we tear down one of these servers, the load balancer should see that that server went down and it should stop sending traffic to it. And then it should start sending traffic to the new server that just got spun up. And so that is how we kind of handle the redundancy aspect uh, in a immutable infrastructure because anytime we need to do, because anytime we need to make changes, we will need to tear down our old setup and spin up a new setup because once again, it's immutable. We cannot change it after it's been deployed. Anyways, guys, that's all I really wanted to explain in this video. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of the difference between a mutable and an immutable infrastructure. Um, but I think that's enough theory up to this point. Uh, and so in the next video, we'll start taking a look at how to set up Packer, how to install it, and how to get started building our first images.